All right. I uh, I don't honestly know if I'm ready for this, but I hit go live, so officially I have to be ready and I have to play the theme music. Actually, you know what? I get to play this theme music. Happy to be here. Sharks night shift. San Jose defeating Chicago 2-0 in a game that just did not have a lot going. I mean, here's my score sheet. It's really simple to digest. Couple penalties taken in this game. Only one goal scored with an actual goalie in the crease. <laughs> um, shots were hard to come by for the Sharks in the first and third periods. Four shots on goal in the first, three in the final frame, including the empty netter. But all of that being said, tonight was about James Reimer for San Jose. His first shutout, the 25th on his career, 29 stops. And because of Rhymes, San Jose gets two or fewer. So do the Blackhawks. But the Sharks win. If you're a frequent viewer of pre- and post-game live, you know we love to talk about two or fewer, as in... If you allow your opponent to score only two goals or fewer, on most nights, you're going to give yourself a great chance to win. It's just not as sexy to, to have this conversation when both teams got two <laughs> or fewer. And realistically, I think you can say it tonight, if you're a Hawks person or if you're a Sharks person, this was a one nothing game. Obviously, the empty netter at the end you know, tells a, a different story, paints a different picture, like gives it a different final taste in the end but it was this one nothing score i mean timo uh got his got his goal 13 39 into the second period and i say timo got it but at first i thought rudolph spalsers got his third goal of the season nonetheless all of it was a great setup pass by logan couture 21 games into this season the sharks are now clearly past the quarter point if 20 wasn't enough for you then 21 is definitely past 25% of 82 games, 11-9-1. And, and I think you've just seen a lot of encouraging signs from the team this season that they are different than they were each of the last two campaigns. The farther we get away from opening night, um, and, and the more examples of even a game like tonight, I realize it's the 16-point Chicago Blackhawks, but after their coaching change, having won 6 of 8, Still having a team with a, a Jones and a Debrinket and a Kane and a Taves and a Marc Andre Fleury, um, every reason why that team can compete. I mean, in the same way that the Sharks can compete, whether they'll always be able to do it, whether they will do it or not, I think is 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 the big question. Uh, but I, I I don't want it to appear like well the Sharks beat a. Uh, an easy team. It's low hanging fruit tonight. I don't think that was the case at all. In fact, getting outshot 11 to four in the first and just the types of chances that Chicago got, they looked hungrier. They looked all over the puck. They looked all over this game if it weren't for James Reimer. Uh, but just kind of going back to the, the bigger picture, being a quarter of the way in, I still hold by my, my gut instinct that the Sharks do not have to struggle this year as they did in seasons prior. They don't have to go on a four or five game losing skid. They don't have to, you know, look at an opponent, line up against a Las Vegas and say, yeah, we don't have a chance tonight. I mean, they're not going to say that, but in the back of their minds, this to me has proven to be a different, of course, a different season, but a different feel to this season. And I, I think, what was the word where Drew used? Uh, compete, level of compete. It's there on a regular basis tonight. I see that. Um, but I, I just see their ability to play in these games uh, and, and competitive. Well, I guess that's compete, com be competitive in these games. That's what I see this season. Um, and you're not, again, you're not talking about a large difference in the roster. The core is still kind of the core, but it's, it is the James Reimers and the Aiden Hills. And I wish Nick Bonino would have got a chance, even at an empty netter to have a three game goal streak. Uh, players like that. Timo Meyer has elevated his game. I know we haven't <clears throat> really discussed him yet, but um, you know, eight and nine goals on the season now for Timo. So nine goals. He missed five games. So nine goals in sixteen games. That's huge. You know, he was a player that at the end of last year, and it's it's now been documented. It's out there that the coaching staff they sat him down at the end of last year and said, "We'd like to see a little bit more." And you know, if you're Timo, this is not a not a case where 
They looked at him and said, well, we've never seen it from him. We want him to be this. They know he's capable of it. I'm just so glad that it's panning out this season. And I, I'm telling you, I have YouTube videos from this past summer, from July, August, September. Uh, people ask me, who was I really going to be watching a bit closer this year? And there were a couple choices for me. Mario Ferraro would have been another one, a player looking to take the next steps, and he has. Uh, but Timo Meyer, you know, being around the league a couple years longer, uh, had kind of what the Sharks need, more of a power forward type. Look where he scored tonight, right out front. I know. You know, it was a tip play. It was a skill play, so I'm not going to take away from it. But it's not like he dangled and sniped. Um, but that's the kind of that's the kind. This is the the start of the season that Timo absolutely needed. Let's go back to James Reimer for just a second. Last game, he allows four goals in 30, 30 plus minutes, half the game, and he had four get past him. And I don't think any of the four were necessarily his fault, but He's the guy to pay that price. I loved to see him tonight respond. Now, whether this was his immediate response or whether this was for the team, if you understand what I'm saying, Curtis and I kind of disagreed with that on the postgame show. I think it was his response. He doesn't care whose fault it was. Four got past him. He wanted redemption. That's the word I'm looking for. Not so much response. He wanted redemption. And to pitch a shutout tonight and to literally put the team on his back, especially in that first period, it was all about redemption. Man, a hooking penalty by the Sharks, a too many men penalty. And uh, on their side, Gustafson took a hooking penalty on LeBanc. That's it. This is, I'm telling you, that my score sheets sometimes are absolutely full. And tonight, just yeah, unbelievable how sometimes these are, these are relatively clean sheets. With that said, uh, I don't know, I'm seven or eight minutes into this, this live stream. It's going to be a bit short tonight. I already have a full Evander Kane video I did before. I hope you check that out. A couple of videos. The press conference that the Sharks held today with Joe Will. Also, uh, my, my complete thoughts on Evander. I'm, by the way, if there are some questions about that in the live chat, really not going to touch on it here. Um, I tried to get my best, best thoughts, best insights, best perspectives out there on the other video. So check it out. It's here on my channel. Uh, by the way, before I get to the Q&A, if you don't mind, thumbs up on this video. It helps other people find it. These Sharks Night Shift videos I do after every game. Uh, and also, if you're not subscribing to the channel, let's fix that right now, too, so you can get more stuff just like this in the future. Okay. Let's dive in here and see what's in the chat. Um, how about this? Whoops. Oh, no. Is it not? Oh, no. No, it's not working. Gosh darn it. I've been having some serious issues with my little, my, my USB device here. Well, it comes out here and then it splits into an HDMI and it uses some other things. And so I'm going to get, I'll tell you what, I'm going to try and boot this here for one second. Hang with me. All right. Some, you might hear some crackling and some popping. Hang with me one second here. Are we back? Oh, but that's not working now. All right, give it a second. Oh, ho, ho, you just got to unplug it and plug it back in. It's still going to have this glitchy thing going on, which really ticks me off, but I'll, I'll muscle, through, muscle through that. Uh, Tim says, you think I need an intern? I was looking for the night shift and looked past this twice because of the Leafs logo? Does it? It still has a Leafs logo on there? No. <laughs> Did I get that wrong? <laughs> Oh, I did get it wrong. Okay, hang on. All right, let me go fix that too while I'm here. Darn it. Literally doing this on the fly. Oh, wait, hang on a second. I'll just put this up here. I'm so sorry. This is really what you guys tuned in for, huh? You tuned in, you tuned in to watch me change my thumbnail. <laughs> there we go. I made it in everything. All right, save it. Okay, so now when people click on the video, they'll get the, uh, they'll get the proper thumbnail. My goodness. Uh, but you're right, though, Tim. This is, now you're seeing truly what happens when it's a one-man band and I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> All right. Uh, 
Jamie. Oh my gosh, I'm not going to try and pronounce your last name, Jamie. Good morning from Poland. And I don't know what you said after that, but it's so awesome that you're watching tomorrow. So I'm breaking the time barrier as well as going across the entire Atlantic Ocean. That's very cool. Uh, shark, if the sharks could put together three periods of what they're capable of every night, they could be dangerous. The first was survive tonight, uh, a solid second, and the third sealed it. And I think that's a great point, Tim. Like, but that's the challenge for every NHL team. Right? They're built for success. Most are. And that's what set, that's why this league and parity is, is so prevalent because no team can really sustain who and what they are for a full 60. You know, some nights you're getting 40 minutes. Sometimes you're getting 48. Sometimes you're getting 28. Or in the case of the Sharks tonight, were they maybe the better team for 30 minutes? I don't know. If you want to put a number on it, I'd be curious to know what the number is, but prob- probably more than that. Um Certainly the, the 20 that, that stand out most were their middle 20. But before and after that, I just, I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Seven more block shots for Ferraro tonight. And the, you know what, Maddie? I'm going to have to go check the stats on that. Just, I mean, I, I don't disbelieve you. I just, I want to see it for myself. I know I saw the one where he was grabbing the knee, came off the ice, and Hurdle blocked one too off the toe. Um, love to see the shot blocks hate to see it sometimes based on who it is how bad it looks how how much pain they're in it i mean and then mario comes up to the podium afterwards you know like like it's no big deal i mean it's one of those things where the pain of it i think is so intense in the moment and i'm saying this because pucks i've taken have not <laughs> not been at that velocity i'm also wearing a bird cage so i'm a little bit more uh, protected overall but uh, one of those things where it just it must sting so bad in the moment and then you know you eventually kind of work it out and i'm sure it leaves a sizable bruise somewhere um from the bay 408 great performance by james reimer amazing saves by him that i seen and that i liked i'm gonna have to agree with you on that uh well caker girl's gonna remind us that it's timo time yep nine goals 16 games i don't care you know empty netters i've watched enough hockey over the years to know when you get an empty netter that's because you are owed a goal you did not get somewhere else Optimus Rhymes was on fire. Alden, good to see you here. Um, how do we feel about Carlson's game since coming back from COVID? You know, Roberto, I don't... I, don't I, I know that maybe the start to the year was a little bit better for him. I have all beliefs that he can, you know, get back to that and maintain it. Um, I, I, don't, I don't see a glaring... Um, you know, there, there were some times defensively. I think that the, the biggest criticism uh, by fans of him like last year, or even the two years ago, the offense wasn't coming, but it was the defense that was not tightened up enough so that the offense missing was really glaring. Um, I think he's definitely tightened it up without the puck. I, I think he's a lot closer to probably where he wants to be, but yeah, still not there. Uh, give credit to Balsers and Reimer, especially Reimer. I totally agree with Rudolph's Balsers shot. That got everything going. And the way that he kicked the puck off his skate back to his stick, um, Really nifty play there in tight. Hey, Darren, I really appreciate that. And I have to tell you, your uh, your contribution here in the Super Chat, it is greatly appreciated, also greatly needed, because uh, <laughs> this device right here, um, I actually, I during the game, I had to replace. I went on and, and online and bought a, a new one. Um, so that's... That's costing me tonight because I need this because the glitchy stuff, the stuff cutting out, I can't have that anymore. Um, so your contribution, all contributions in the Super Chat go entirely back into uh, this channel, the equipment I need to do these live streams and content material just like this. Uh, oh, and so so let me just close it off and say I, I appreciate you, Darren, um, and thank you so much because like, like you said, the tech fund, that's exactly where it's going. Uh, Matthew, appreciate you also in the super chat. Uh, been to some Sharks games lately, and the attendance is lacking quite a bit. What can the Sharks do uh, to fix the problems at SAP? And now I was there on Friday night, and you know it was Friday night against Toronto, day after Thanksgiving, and you know was not entirely full, like every seat full as it used to be. Um, I recognize that the Sharks, even before COVID, were, you know, in a different spot attendance-wise than what we're all used to and, and what we expect. I also want to say that I still think Sharks fans especially, the conscious community they are, 
um, you know, I, I think, and, and a lot of people in Silicon Valley in the South Bay not going to work and maybe feeling like just being in a, in a place like the, like the tank that they love, that they normally love, maybe they're not, they're just not at that phase yet where they're ready for it. Um, so I'm not, I'm not going to sit here, Matthew, and I know you want real answers and I'm not sitting here and just making excuses. I really do think that alone factors into a certain percentage of attendance. Um, as for the rest, you know, I, 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 I truly also think that once some, this team gains a little bit more steam and momentum, it's going to be just like old times again. And they're not that far off on a lot of nights. Uh, I think the tank has a new capacity of 16,000 something. Um, am I right about that? High 16s? Anyway, long story short, um, you know, I, I don't know what the attendance was on, on uh, Friday, but 15, 14, 15? I don't know. Um, so they're not far off. Like I said, part of it has to do with the excitement of this team. Let's see how the season goes. Let's see down the stretch. They're talking about being a playoff team. I, I, I think that's going to win a lot of fans over all over again. And hopefully, gosh, and you know, I, I, nobody can predict the, the health status of our, our region, our country, our world, but hopefully people can feel more comfortable because the situation will allow for that as time goes on. So I, I think those two things are elements um, but definitely something I've I've noticed too. Um, so when do when will Aiden Hill start and give James Reimer a break? Well, it's hard, right? Because now you're thinking, all right, Tuesday against the Devils. I mean, Reimer just pitched a shutout. How do you want to stop him? And then and then Reimer may not play if there's no game on Thursday. Maybe they can make a decision tomorrow if they know that the Islanders game is on or not or off for Thursday. So that's a whole nother ball of wax. You have the Islanders who have their games postponed through Tuesday. You don't, you don't know if for the Sharks how many games they're going to have in the rest of this week. So certainly sooner than later with a back-to-back, you'll see Hill and Reimer. But four starts in a row for Rhymes. I, I knew it was coming. We were told that. Um, but that's certainly not something I expected, you know, even two, three weeks ago that we'd be at this phase where somebody gets four in a row, Hill or Reimer. Uh, I didn't know that it was necessarily in the plans. Rhymes alone was better than the team for the whole 60. I don't know. You know what? It was just, it was a good, it was a good team effort. I think that you would just like to have seen that good team effort a little more in the first and a little more in the third instead of just the second period. By the way, you notice how I mentioned that this device over here has had issues and then now look at it on the chat. The graphics not popping around or anything. No, nothing's disconnecting. Uh, been glued to the event summary sheet for the whole game. So that's why you know Mario Ferraro had another seven blocked shots. Oh, even though tomorrow is your birthday. This is a great present from the Sharks. Caker girl, Timo Meyer. <laughs> I'm sure he uh, I'm sure he had you in mind when he fired at the empty net. You know, got to do it for Caker girl. Uh, ask Curtis Brown about puck pain. It's usually or mostly very temporary as long as it does not break bones and only hits deep flesh. Uh, puck ain't a bullet, okay? All right, but uh, blocking takes real courage. I totally agree. And I think that's the point, right? Is that you don't know when a player blocks a shot like, for example, in the hands here, if it gets inside the mitts or, you know, hits a spot where a lot, of, a lot of small bones here. Same thing with your foot. A lot of small bones that can break. That's what you don't want to happen. Um, if you ask me, these kind of games are the ones we can never get enough of from the Sharks. Uh, I, I agree with that. I, I, I just think this year, right, you know you can play up to the level of a Calgary or hopefully a, a Las Vegas and you've already done it against Minnesota You've looked, you know, pretty good against some of the, the top teams in the league. Uh, already beat Toronto once. So my point is, though, yeah, you, you do have to win these kind of, you know, 50-50 games. The ones you're supposed to win and the ones you're not supposed to win are all out there. But the ones right in the middle, like tonight, a competitive team like Chicago, and they can be, it's a 50-50 game. you got to go out and win the 50-50 games. Uh, you saw me on the Sharks broadcast the other night. You know, believe it or not, uh, Andy, this is... <laughs> You, you, YouTube is not my uh, number one job. Uh, the TV stuff is. Uh, so this is the this is the thing I do as a passion project for fans and also to help build this channel and uh, you know really really make it something valuable for for Sharks fans and A's fans and uh, Bay Area people, decent people. I'm trying to do this channel for decent people. Good way to start the week with a shutout. Yeah, I guess. Um, I never really think about it. We don't see a lot of we don't see a lot of uh, Sunday games for the Sharks. So uh, anyway, 
I wonder how Super Mario's legs are from all the block shots. Well, should we text him and find out? No, we're not going to do that. We're, we're going to leave him alone right now. Um, Flashhound, any thoughts about the shark situation regarding the standings going into December? Uh, and you know what? I think this will be the last comment. I'm just looking at the clock. Um, uh, look, we're going to start getting division games next month in December, and I can't wait to see how the Sharks look against Anaheim, how they look against L.A. I mean, got to play Seattle, Vancouver in there. Um, you're seeing all these Chicago's in New Jersey twice already and Winnipeg three times before you even see the Kings or Golden Knights. It's, it is pretty amazing. But I'm just, I am looking forward to having a sense. Okay, we know what the standings are, but having a sense, how do the Sharks actually match up against some of these opponents? All right, with that said, hit the drums. Theme music, please. I am out of here on a uh, Sunday night. I don't say that very often. But I highly encourage you, while you're here on the channel, before you click away, um, a couple videos. There's the Evander Kane press conference that Joe Will did, uh, acting as general manager today. He's the assistant GM in place of Doug right now. So he answered pretty much every question from the Sharks' perspective. Also, this a video in a live stream I just put out about 90 minutes ago. Every thought about Evander Kane's return and what's next for him, what's next for the Sharks, and what's next for the Barracuda. As for tonight, let's let's not omit a 2-0 Sharks victory over Chicago. I'm glad they got it. I'm glad they're doing well on these roadies. These are a bit intimidating when they start, but hey, maybe this road trip, maybe they can win something like four out of five. Good night, everybody. I'll talk to you next time. It'll be soon.